Karen is at a corporate party. Her boss, Mia, brings a bunch of identical envelopes and says, I personally put the grand prize in one of these envelopes. It's a certificate for a trip to Bali. But no worries, the remaining envelope contains consolidation prizes prepared by our sponsors. Can you help Karen win the trip to Bali? There's a lipstick print on this envelope. Mia has a similar lip color. She said that she had personally packed only one envelope, so the grand prize should be here. The day of Karen's flight to Bali has finally come. She calls a taxi to the airport. Soon, three identical taxis arrive at her porch. Uh -oh. But only one of these drivers can actually give Karen a safe ride. Can you guess who? The second car has a flat tire, and the driver of the third taxi is a werewolf. Take a look at his claws. It's a full moon, so he'll turn into a wolf soon. Therefore, Karen should choose the first taxi. Karen's luggage is too heavy, so she goes to the cash register to pay for the excess. Oh no, her card holder is gone. Karen asks three people standing nearby, have you seen a pink card holder? The cleaner says, I found two lost wallets today, but none of them look like yours. The cashier says, I was busy with another customer, so I didn't look around. And another passenger says, Don't waste time, honey. Block your cards as soon as possible. Who stole the wallet? Nobody. Karen put it in the fold of her hat and forgot it there. See? On the plane, the steward asks Karen to switch seats with another passenger. Karen can choose one of these three seats. Can you help her figure out the best option? This man has very long legs, so he'll probably kick the back of Karen's chair all along. The second option is next to this elegant lady but she's stealing money from another passenger. Probably not the best company for a long hour flight. Although the third guy looks like a vampire, it's just a costume. He's sitting by the window, but the sun rays don't bother him. So he's the best option. Karen arrives at a fancy hotel in Bali. The manager shows her the three best bungalows uh -oh. to choose from, but only one of them is safe enough. Can you help Karen to make the best choice? The first bungalow doesn't have a door, which makes Karen an easy target for robbers and mosquitoes. And there's a scorpion under the bed in the third bungalow, so she should choose the second one. On the beach, Karen meets three ladies who claim to be millionaires and show her pictures to prove it. But one of them is fake rich. Can you guess who? It's the first lady. She's just modeling for an electric toothbrush commercial. So her luxury is artificial. Karen is walking down the shore and sees a party. It's a beach wedding. So the bride and groom don't wear traditional costumes. Can you find the newlyweds among these people? Take a look at the cake. The letters say Harry plus Amy. This lady is wearing a necklace with the name Amy, so she's the bride. And now look at the flower garland around her neck. Only one person is wearing the identical garland, this guy. So he's probably the groom. Karen spots her former classmate, Tom, among the guests. He's talking to a strange lady. The lady is wearing a hoodie and standing with her back turned to Karen so Karen can't see her face. Tom and the lady leave together and hide from everyone on the roof of the beach restaurant where the party takes place. Later that night, Karen also visits the roof. There's no one else here, but after checking the roof, 
Karen knows for sure which of these three ladies is Tom's secret girlfriend. How did she know? The third lady's dress is decorated with gold sequins. She lost one sequin on the roof. Tom sees Karen and invites her for a walk along the shore. She spots four weird things right away. Uh -oh. Can you see them too? A mermaid is hiding in the waves. This sandcastle has electric lighting. Tree branches flutter in the wind to the right, but the flags to the left. And finally, the moon has a creepy face. The next morning, Karen goes to the buffet breakfast. She wants to get a smoothie, but there's no information about the ingredients in English. Uh -oh. Unfortunately, Karen is allergic to strawberries. Can you figure out which smoothies are safe for her? It's all about the color. Only the green and yellow smoothies don't contain any strawberries for sure. Other options are risky. Karen enters a spa center. The manager asks her to wait for 15 minutes. Karen takes a seat and falls asleep. She wakes up after a while and finds out that someone had given her a heart-shaped tattoo. She questions three suspects. Bobby, the client, says, Lady, I've just arrived on my motorbike. If I see any crazy tattoo artists around here, I'll tell you. Leah says, I've been cleaning the bathroom within the last 30 minutes. And Tony, the massage therapist, says, Sorry, I was busy with my client, so I didn't look at you at all. Who's lying? Bobby, this motorbike has flat tires. And besides, it was already there when Karen entered the spa. Luckily, the tattoo was temporary and the massage therapist helped Karen to remove it, but he charged her $5 for his help. Karen arrived at the spa during happy hours when they offer a 45% discount on all services. So Karen paid only $12 for a one-hour massage. Also, she had a pedicure for $7. When Karen left, she found a $50 bill on the ground. How much money did Karen spend in total? Can you count? Karen spent a total of $24. As for this $50 bill, it's fake, so it doesn't make any difference. Karen brings her clothes to the local laundry owned by three sisters. She returns to pick up her stuff in five hours. Unfortunately, someone has burned her favorite dress with an iron. Karen gets furious and questions the sisters. Mia says, I didn't iron today, it must be Pia. Pia says, nah, I was planting roses in the garden all day, it must be Gia. And Gia says, I don't know who's guilty because I've been away all day. Who burned Karen's dress? It was Pia. Take a look at the garden. Can you see any roses? Exactly. Karen returns to her hotel room and uh -oh. finds a huge bouquet in a vase. The note says, love, your secret admirer. Karen calls the reception to find out more. The manager says, one of the hotel's male guests ordered the flowers, but I can't reveal his name. Only three male guests stay in this hotel at the moment, Hans, Jacques, and Will. Karen meets them all at the beach and spots her secret admirer right away. Do you have any clue who it might be? Karen received pink lilies. Take a look at Hans's shirt. It has a print with pink lilies. He loves these flowers, but this doesn't prove anything. Will has a tan line from a wedding ring and he's taking pictures of his wife surfing. But Jacques is writing in the sand and his handwriting looks suspiciously similar to the love note. Spotted! Karen and Jacques go for a walk. 
he brings her to a pier with three boats. Jacques says, If you manage to guess where my boat is, I'm going to give it away to you. Can you help Karen find the right answer? Someone's sleeping on the second boat, but this doesn't mean that the person is the owner. The third boat is called Jacques, but this name is quite popular. Let's take a closer look at the first boat. Can you see the red trousers on a hanger? They match perfectly with Jacques' jacket. Therefore, this is his boat. Ms. Harrelson called the police and reported that someone had broken into her house. When the officers arrived, they found the woman tied up to a chair. She said a man in a black mask had entered her house and tied her up so that she couldn't even move. Then he had stolen all her savings and left. But the officers didn't believe Ms. Harrelson and arrested her for misreporting. Why? If the woman couldn't move, how did she manage to call the police? It was Hazley's birthday. Her parents said that they had a present for her, but she had to find it first. To help the girl, they gave her a note that said, where should the girl look for her present? It seems as if the note doesn't make any sense. But that's only because the two halves of each word are switched. If Hazley places them in the correct order, she'll get pretty straightforward instructions. Your present is hidden in the basement. Sydney told her mother that she and her gymnastics team were going to a sports camp for the weekend. Mrs. Stevenson knew her daughter well and suspected it was just an excuse. Sydney was going to spend the weekend with her boyfriend instead. Still, the woman helped Sydney pack and let her go. When the girl returned, she was angry with her mom for forgetting to pack a toothbrush. That was when Mrs. Stevenson realized she had been right and Sydney hadn't been to the sports camp. How did she figure it out? When she packed Sydney's things, she put the toothbrush in the bag with her gymnastics clothing. If her daughter had indeed been to the sports camp, she'd have opened the bag and found the toothbrush. But she didn't, which means she never used that bag. Look at these people who are doing their grocery shopping. One of them has stolen a watermelon. Can you tell who? It must be this guy on the right. He's holding a soccer ball, but it looks as if it's very heavy. And since soccer balls don't weigh much, it must be a disguised watermelon. Mason went on an expedition to Antarctica. His boss asked him to send pictures as proof that he was actually there. Mason sent pictures every day, but when he returned from the expedition, his boss fired him. Take a closer look at the pictures and try to understand what his boss didn't like. Mason was sent to Antarctica, but in some pictures, you can see palm trees. No wonder the boss realized the photos were photoshopped and Mason hadn't gone there at all. An old man had extremely poor vision. He was living with his son, Mark, because he needed assistance all the time. One day, the man was resting in his armchair while his son was preparing dinner. Suddenly, Mark heard glass shatter. The man ran into the room and saw that the window was broken. He asked what had happened. His father told him that some dark-eyed, dark-haired guy had thrown a stone into the window and shattered it. Then he ran away. But Mark didn't believe his father. Why? The man had extremely poor vision, and he wasn't wearing his glasses at the time of the accident. He couldn't see the guy, let alone the color of his hair and eyes. Savannah went on a business trip with her husband. In the evening, the woman didn't feel well and suddenly blacked out. When Savannah woke up a couple of hours later, she couldn't remember anything. There were two men in front of her and both claimed to be her husband. The woman couldn't remember which of them was her real husband. Can you help her figure it out?
They went to a business meeting. That's why they are both dressed accordingly. The guy in a hoodie doesn't look formal, so her husband must be the other one, the man who's wearing a suit. Now, this girl, Susanna, can't remember who her husband is too. Can you help her? It must be this guy. Look, he's wearing a ring while the other doesn't seem to be married. Ava's parents, John and Catherine, came to the hospital to pick up the teenager. Can you tell which of these young people is their child? It's this girl. John and Catherine are Ava's parents. Ava is a girl's name, and she's the only girl in the room. Esme was having her usual walk in the forest. By nighttime, she realized she had gotten lost again. She was wandering around until she came across the witch's house. The girl petted the cat, <laughs> greeted the witch, and asked the woman to send her home. At that time, the witch was participating in a math tournament for witches from all over the world. She really wanted to win and to prove she was the smartest witch out there. There was one last task she couldn't solve. The witch promised that if Esme helped her, she'd let her go home. If not, Esme would have to stay with the witch forever. Here's the task. Make three identical squares by moving only three matches. You just have to move these three matches over there. It works, and Esme can return home. Thor asked his friends to guess what his laptop's three-digit password was. Each of them made a guess. The numbers they chose were 357, 902, 907, 954. Even though no one's guess was right, every person guessed one digit correctly and exactly in its right place. Can you figure out Thor's passcode? Since just one of them guessed one digit correctly, the first digit can't be 9. In this case, three people would have guessed it right. And there wouldn't be enough people to guess the third digit. The only other option for the first digit is 3. Which means the second digit can't be 5 and the third one can't be 7. Since the second one can't be 5, then it's 0. Two people guessed it correctly. And the third digit is 4. If it was 2, it would mean someone guessed two digits correctly, 0 and 2. But that's not true. So Thor's code is 304. Students were divided into two teams to do one task. Storm, Dean, and Brooke were in Team Yellow. Elsie, Emma, and Veda were in Team Purple. Following the same logic, what group does Lexi belong to? In Team Yellow, there are students whose names have just one syllable. In Team Purple, there are students with the names that consist of two syllables. Lexi's name has two syllables, so she belongs to Team Purple. Atlas got trapped in the attic of an old house. There are just three ways out, and all of them dangerous. Behind the first door, the roof and the floor are made out of magnifying glass, and the sun will burn anyone who comes in. Behind the second door, there's a room filled with poisonous gas, and the third door is hiding a hungry lion. How can Atlas escape? He should wait until it's night. The sun will set, and the guy will safely walk through the first door. Now, take a look at Iris and her close friends. Max, Jenny, Josh, and Ren. Who's her partner? It must be Josh. Look, they have matching tattoos. On a rainy night, Dylan was driving past a bus stop. There were three people there. An elderly lady who was feeling unwell, a doctor who saved many lives, and Selena, a girl Dylan had been crushing on for years. Unfortunately, there was only room for one more person in the car. What should Dylan do? He should give his car to the doctor, 
who would take the elderly lady and drive her to the hospital. And Dylan can stay at the bus stop with the girl of his dreams. Charlie, Andy, Taylor, and Alex are all related to each other. But one of them is the opposite gender from the other three. Here's what you know. Alex is either Charlie's brother or Charlie's only daughter. Alex's sister is either Andy or Taylor. Taylor's only son is either Charlie or Andy. Can you tell who's the opposite gender from the other three? If Alex is Charlie's only daughter, then Alex cannot have a sister. It means that Alex is Charlie's brother. If Alex's sister is Andy, then Andy's a girl. And according to fact 3, Charlie is Taylor's only son. But Alex is Charlie's brother. So we have a contradiction here. It means that Alex's sister is Taylor. So Taylor's a girl. Charlie, Alex, and Taylor are siblings. And Andy is Taylor's son. Keenan was watching TV when a detective arrived with a search warrant. The detective said that the city bank had been robbed, and Keenan was the main suspect. The man replied that he hadn't even left the house that day. He couldn't do anything. The police didn't find the money, but still arrested the man. Why? Keenan said he hadn't left the house. But take a look at the calendar and the grocery store receipt. The dates are the same. It means Keenan at least did some grocery shopping and lied about not leaving the house. Wow! While working late at night in a top-secret laboratory, Michael finally managed to create the DNA of a hybrid monstrous creature. After all that hard work, he decided to grab a quick coffee and donut as a little reward. But he came back and saw that the specimen had disappeared from the incubator. Hmm. Michael lined up Ryan, Jeff, and Laura and confronted them. Who took an important top-secret piece of research I was working on? Ryan said he'd been busy doing some additional research on a separate project and had no idea what was going on. Jeff said he hadn't touched the hybrid creature and had been in the archives digging through some files he needed. And Laura said she'd been in the bathroom the whole time. So who took the specimen? Michael never mentioned that he was dealing with a hybrid monstrous creature. Jeff just let himself get caught. Better think smart next time. Anne absolutely loathes winter. But just like anyone else, she has to go out and do stuff. She had just moved to a snowy city for work and experiences some of the coldest winters. But she managed to make it to the mall to do some quick shopping through a huge blizzard. When she came back to her parked car, she discovered that someone broke into it and took her belongings. When the police lined up the three suspects, they each gave their stories. Francesca said she had been polishing her car outside and didn't know anything. Ned said he had been shopping for clothes, and Earl said he had been sitting in a cafe on the upper floor of the mall. The police arrested the suspect. Who was it? Francesca. She was polishing her car outside in the middle of a blizzard? That's not only illogical, but not safe either. She just gave herself away. You wake up and find yourself trapped in a room with four doors in front of you. You don't have enough time to choose which door leads to freedom. You hear a monster coming, so you check out the doors quickly. The leftmost door has a sign on it saying, take the door on the right to break free. The second door also has a sign saying, it's the right door. The third door has a sign, freedom is just right in front of you. And the last door has a sign, don't trust the signs. Which door should you choose? The last door. It says not to trust the signs, but it doesn't mean that they're lying. The first door says to take the door on the right. Not necessarily the last door on the right, but just the one on the right. The second one says, 
It's the right door. Not the correct door, but the right door, as in the door on the right. The third door says freedom is just right in front of you. That just doesn't make any sense, does it? So it's the last door on the right that leads to freedom. Mason was extremely happy when he got the news that his sister Jane was coming to town. He had just started a new job and couldn't wait to host her for the first time. She was only able to see some nice pictures of the places he visited, including where he lived. When he picked her up from the airport, he noticed something slightly off about her. She was robotic with her responses and seemed stiff with her movements. She wouldn't eat and only insisted that she wanted to rest up. Strange. Had he been watching too much sci-fi? After a while, Mason hears a knock on the door, and to his surprise, it's Jane. But I thought… Jane tells him that the Jane in his apartment is an imposter. When the Jane in the bedroom goes out and sees the other Jane sitting on the couch, they're both in shock. They both try to convince Mason that they're the real Jane. But who will Mason believe? It's pretty normal to come back from a trip pretty tired and wanting to rest. But how did the second Jane know where Mason lived without prior knowledge? And she didn't even break a sweat running up to the apartment. On a nice day, Vivian, who lived in a town on the seashore, decided to go for a hike alone. But after hours of trekking, she ended up on a section of the forest she wasn't familiar with. Before her were three paths. One path had bare footprints leading away. Another had human shoe prints, and the third was right by the river. Which one should Vivian take to find her way? The river path. Since she lives in a coastal town, the river mouth most likely ends up in the sea. That way, she could figure out where she is. Melissa is sharing a train car with three other people. It's a very hot day, and the air conditioner doesn't even work. James starts complaining and only calms down after opening the window. Melissa lays down her red silk scarf her grandmother gave her next to her. Judith compliments it. Robert, a senior, mentions that he forgot to bring a gift for his wife who will pick him up from the train station. James has a crush on Judith. After a while, Melissa goes to the bathroom and comes back to find the scarf missing. Who was the one who took it? None of them. It was a hot day and James opened the window. The wind sent the scarf flying right out of it. Some zombies have Diego trapped in a room. They're surrounding him. He's stuck and can't escape. Their arms are breaking in and reaching for him. When Diego looks around, he realizes that he's in a small newspaper stand with magazines and pocketbooks. And looking around him more attentively, he finds a roll of tape nearby. How can he avoid those nasty bites? The only way for Diego to escape will be to tape those magazines around crucial parts of his body where they can't lay his teeth on him. It'll be light enough for him to run away from the zombies without getting hurt. Plus, he'll have plenty of reading material for the road. Evan got lost in a forest, and just his luck, it was snowing. The only thing the police searching for him found were four parallel lines leading into the forest. Something doesn't seem right, they thought, and took several people into questioning. Nick said he had been at the store buying some groceries. Vanessa said she had been babysitting. Christina had been at work the whole time. After hearing the stories, they arrested Nick. Why? Nick was in a wheelchair. The four parallel lines were left by Nick rolling into the forest and back out. 
It's the beginning of a new school year, and Dave started a new job as a computer studies teacher at a local high school. Another fellow teacher, Roy, didn't really welcome him because he wanted that position. But at the end of the day, there was a security breach which leaked out a lot of important information about the school. When the police questioned everyone, including Roy and Dave, they each gave their stories. Dave said, I was checking exam papers and was at the staff room the whole time. Roy said, I was preparing homework for my classes when everything happened. Who should the police arrest? Who was lying? Dave. There wouldn't be any exams on the first day of school. Gareth is in a pickle. He's at the police station looking at the lined-up suspects, one of whom stole Beth's bag while she was having a picnic in the park. He observes them. Beth describes the culprit as someone big, no hair, and wearing a black jacket. All the men lined up match the description. Gareth looks at each of them, and they all have one distinct trait that makes them stand out from each other. Suspect number one has a beard. Number two is wearing shorts. And number three is wearing glasses. Gareth knows immediately who to arrest. Who is it? Suspect number one has dirt all over his boots. The rest are all clean. He ran through the mud tracks while Beth was having a picnic. Henry and Mia lived together in New York. They wanted to run away from big city life and celebrate their anniversary in the wild. So the guys used a special online service and found three available options nearby. Bob offered his cozy treehouse in the woods for a reasonable price. Julia offered this fancy geodesic dome with all conveniences. It's a two-hour drive away from New York, and Crystal offered an old mansion that she'd inherited from her granny. Can you help the guys make the right choice? Take a closer look at the picture of the dome. It's located near the Leaning Tower of Pisa, which means this property is in Italy and it can't be two hours away from New York. And Crystal's granny's ghost is still in the house, so Mia and Henry should choose the treehouse. The guys contacted Bob, booked the house, and hit the road. Mia is a famous blogger, so she decided to post all milestones of their journey in her stories. Can you spot any differences between these two pictures? Here they are. What about these two pictures? There are three differences. What can you say about these two? Can you see three differences? Here they are. While the guys were driving along a highway, someone threw a can of paint into their car. Mia and Henry stopped at the nearest car wash and interviewed four other drivers. Bill said, My truck has to be perfect. I'm going on a date this evening. Jack said, I'm going to meet my business partner at the airport. I want to leave a good impression. Lily said, Honestly, I don't need to have my car washed. I just stopped here to visit the restroom. Ryan said, my boss gave me this coupon so that I could wash my car for free. Who stained Henry and Mia's car? Lily. Her right hand is stained with the paint of the same color. And besides, she has a print of Mia's face on her t-shirt. She's definitely obsessed with her. The guys washed their car and continued on their journey. They had to choose one of these three roads to reach their destination. The first one went through toxic swamps. People often get lost in that area. The second path went near a river with creepy sirens. Their singing made everyone jump into the water. 
and a band of angry robbers was waiting on the third road. Which way should the guys opt for? The second one. They can close all the windows, turn some music on, and drive past the sirens very fast. Mia suggested visiting the farmer's market to buy some fresh produce for their romantic weekend. When they entered the marketplace, three sellers offered them apples, but only one deal was safe enough. Can you help the guys make the right choice? Seller number one offers very old apples. Take a look at the date on the box. They expired five years ago. Seller number three offers very beautiful apples. But pay attention to his assistant. She's putting shoe polish on the apples to make them look better. So, Mia and Henry should pick the second seller. Henry and Mia left the market and put all their purchases into the car. Suddenly, Henry realized that he'd left a bag with cabbage at the farmer's stall. He returned but couldn't find the bag. Henry questioned three people he saw nearby. Vera said, I only eat fruit, mister. See, I've got bananas and apples. Bella said, Yes, I saw your bag. The seller put the cabbage back on the shelf. And the seller said, I don't know what's going on here. I spent the last 10 minutes in the bathroom. Who's lying? Vera. She hid the cabbage under her elegant hat. Finally, the guys reached their destination. The treehouse is even better than in the photo, but can you spot anything weird in this picture? This raccoon is wearing sunglasses. The owner of the treehouse, Bob, lives in another country and the house is located 15 miles away from the village and other people. That's why Bob installed a special digital clock on the door. When Henry booked the property, Bob gave him a six-digit password. But unfortunately, Henry had lost it. Here's a hint. M80. Can you help the guy crack the code? These symbols are mirrored digits. Split them apart and you'll get the code 1133CC. The guys unlocked the door. But as soon as Mia entered the living room, she got very scared. She asked Henry to call the police. Why? The treehouse is in the middle of nowhere. Who lit the candles and the fire? The house was locked. Henry checked all the rooms, but found no clues. What about you? Any ideas who that could be? That roof window is open. Someone crawled inside the house before the guy's arrival. And now that someone is hiding under the bed, see? The guys called the police. Officers promised to arrive within an hour. Mia decided to take a shower. When she returned to the living room, she realized that Henry had disappeared. Mia searched the garden, then checked all the rooms in the house and returned to the garden again. But she failed to find any clues. Can you help her? The hot tub was open when Mia began her search, but now it's closed. Pretty suspicious. Mia was walking through the garden. Suddenly, a man in a mask popped out of nowhere and pushed her. Mia stepped on a trap and fell into a deep well. She yelled, Please help me out! No one answered, but Mia's phone pinged. The masked man offered her to play a game. Otherwise, she'd have to stay in the well forever. Here's the first riddle. I come in many different colors, and I get bigger when I'm full. I will float away if you don't tie me down, and I will make a loud sound if I break. What am I? Mia nailed it immediately. What about you?
The correct answer is a balloon. Here's the second question. I can jump and I can climb. With many legs, I swing from tree to tree. I can make a house much bigger than me. What am I? Have you guessed? It's a spider. And the final question. I come out at night without being called. I'm lost in the day without being stolen. What am I? Can you help Mia? The correct answer is a star. A hatch opened at the bottom of the well. Mia went through it and got into a creepy basement. There, she found three ways to freedom, but every door hid some danger. A fire-breathing dragon was sleeping behind the first door. The corridor behind the second door was filled with high-voltage wires. And a vampire was waiting behind the third door. Suddenly, a message appeared on the screen of the girl's phone. Hurry up! Soon the walls will close in and smash you! Which way should Mia choose? She should wait until the walls are close enough so that she can scare the vampires away with this stake and go through the third door. When the police arrived at the treehouse, they found Mia and Henry at the porch. Henry had just woken up. The robbers had put sleeping pills in his coffee. The officers searched the area and found some clues. They concluded that the criminals were planning to leave the country by train. Unfortunately, no one knew what they looked like or how big the group was. So they stopped four suspicious people at the railway station and examined their baggage. Can you figure out who's innocent? Why would a bald man need shampoo? And this supposedly blind person has a flashlight. This guy is carrying three tubes of toothpaste, but no single toothbrush. It seems that only the third guy isn't a criminal. Three friends lived not far from one another and often met to drink some coffee together. Their names were Mr. Blue, Mr. Red, and Mr. White. One day, they noticed that under their coats, they were wearing t-shirts of different colors. Red, Blue, and White. Mr. Blue said, Hey, Mr. White, have you noticed that we're all wearing colors that are different from our actual names? The man wearing the white shirt answered, Wow, you're right! Can you figure out the shirt of which color each of them was wearing? Mr. Blue can only be wearing white or red, but we've already learned that someone else is wearing the white shirt. That means that Mr. Blue can only be wearing the red shirt, and Mr. White can only be wearing a blue or red shirt. And the red shirt is already taken, so Mr. White is wearing the blue shirt. Then Mr. Red is wearing the white shirt. Mia and Henry decided to spend the night in a hotel nearby. The manager said that they only had three free rooms. Can you help the guys choose the best option? This room doesn't have any doors. That's weird. And this room has a cracked mirror on the ceiling. It's too risky. The second option looks pretty safe and nice. The guys checked in and Henry asked Mia, well, where do you want to go now? She answered with this riddle. You used to visit me when you needed to know, but I've been lonely since the internet was born. What am I? Have you guessed? The correct answer is a library. In the library, the guys met these four students. One of them is broke. Can you guess who? Student number three. Her uniform is too large for her body. It must have belonged to her sister. All right, you super sleuth. In this detective challenge, there are three levels. Each next riddle is trickier than the previous one. Aha! 
To get to the end and find out your results, you'll need to concentrate hard and use all your detective skills. Level 1. Anthony lives in the south of town, 20 minutes away from college. Mark's house is in the north and a bit closer, just 10 minutes away. Their lectures start at the same time, and the guys always meet in the park on the way to their classes. Who's usually further from the college building when it happens? The boys meet at the same point. It means they're the same distance away from the college building. Milan Airport Customs officers noticed that one man traveled abroad at least several times a week. They started to suspect he was a smuggler, but couldn't understand what he smuggled. He always had a suitcase or a bag with him, but there never was anything forbidden or expensive inside. Only several months later, when a new customs officer joined the team, the mystery was solved. What was it the man smuggled? He smuggled designer suitcases and bags. Detective Dan Carlos was following a criminal who had stolen his watch. This person, Dan didn't see whether it was a man or a woman, ran for a hospital building and disappeared inside. When the detective rushed through the doors, he saw two doctors examining their patients. One of them had to be the criminal he was looking for. But which one? It's the woman on the left. Her stethoscope earpieces aren't in her ears. Emily had passed a difficult test with flying colors. But for some inexplicable reason, her professor's sure the girl cheated. After arguing for a while, they come to an agreement. If Emily solves one riddle her teacher will give her, she'll get to keep her high mark. On the piece of paper the professor hands her, there's just one word. House. The girl doesn't need much time to figure out the answer. What is it? In this case, the color matters. The answer is greenhouse. Little Adam knew his older brother Philip got some money for his birthday. But however hard Adam tried, he couldn't find it. One day, when Philip was away, the boy sneaked into his brother's room. There was no money, but Adam found a map. The older boy had hidden the cash in the garden. Adam followed the instructions to a T. 10 steps to the left, 15 to the right, then 8 straight ahead. It must be here! The boy started to dig. He wasted 2 hours and still found nothing. Did Philip trick his little brother? Adam's steps were much smaller than his brother's. That's why he was digging in the wrong place. Level 2 It was the middle of a working day, and Helen was in her office. Suddenly, her home security system informed her there was someone inside. The woman called the police. She was sure the intruder had been sent by her competitors. She thought he was after the memory card with the information about her new project. When the police arrived, there was indeed a man in the house. They searched him but found no memory card. He couldn't have swallowed it. Then where was the card? When the police got him, the man secretly slipped the memory card into one officer's pocket. After being searched, the criminal retrieved the card. The manager of a ski resort has gone missing. The police suspect three people that are staying at the hotel. Unfortunately, no one can find any of these people. They're probably on the slope skiing. The police officers have no time to waste and decide to examine their rooms. Look at the suspect's stuff and say who is behind the disappearance of the manager. It's Joe. He's the only one who doesn't have warm clothes or winter sports gear and equipment. 
It means he didn't come to the resort to have some fun. Jason, a rich traveler, stayed in a small but expensive hotel at the seaside. During a severe storm with gale-force winds, there was a blackout. The whole area was plunged into darkness. People stayed without electricity for at least two hours. The problem was finally solved. But Jason discovered that during the commotion, someone had taken his wallet with tons of cash and all his credit cards. The police arrived and questioned the people who had been in the hotel at that time. Justin, the receptionist, told the detective he had been in the basement. He had been trying to start an emergency generator. Unfortunately, he didn't succeed. Nicole, another guest, said she arrived an hour before the blackout. She was exhausted. She lit several candles, unpacked, cleaned herself, and went to bed. Gregory, the hotel driver, said he had been at the airport. A new guest had arrived, and he went to pick him up. The police immediately figured out who was lying. Can you? The blackout was caused by a bad storm, and planes don't fly in such windy weather. Then how could someone arrive by airplane? Gregory lied. In the 22nd century, robots live among people, and it's nothing out of the ordinary. But sometimes, they resemble people so much, it makes detective work way harder. Like this time. Eric Blank, an experienced police officer, has to figure out which of the three suspects is guilty of identity theft. He knows for sure the culprit is a robot. But who isn't human? It's the girl in the middle. She has a USB port on the side of her neck. Level 3 Maria had to take part in a very important sports competition. But several days before the event, her boyfriend, Keith, found out the girl had disappeared. The only thing she left behind was a note. I'm sorry, I had to leave. We'll never see each other again. Please call my sister Jenny. Her phone number is 2121. 736362. Confused by the message, Keith went to the police. I think Maria was taken away against her will and made to write this note. She is an only child in the family and doesn't have a sister. The police started an investigation. They found three people who could be behind the disappearance. Cheryl, Maria's competitor, said she had been at her mom's house, resting before the competition. Aaron, Cheryl's coach, told the police he'd been spending all his time at the gym. And Kyle, Maria's coach, said he had felt unwell and stayed in bed. Who knows something about Maria's whereabouts? In her note, the girl didn't write a phone number. This way, she encoded the criminal's name, Aaron. Boy, who needs a coach like that? Janet had a dream. She wanted to become her professor's assistant. The man was a famous and talented scientist. The man knew she was a smart girl. But before offering her the position, he decided to put her to the test. The professor took her to a house with two rooms, completely isolated from each other. In one room, there were three switches. In the other room, there were three light bulbs. Janet had to stay in the room with the switches. She was allowed to go to the other room only once. She had to understand which switch was connected to each of the bulbs. The girl managed to solve this task. How did she do it? She turned on the first switch and waited for a minute. Then she turned it off. After that, she flipped the second switch and went inside the room with the bulbs. One of the bulbs was on. It was the one connected to the second switch. Janet touched the remaining bulbs. The warm one was connected to the first switch, and the cold one was linked to the third switch. Kyle lived on the sixth floor of an apartment building. Once, the man was having his coffee on the balcony. Suddenly, he spotted a woman on the eighth floor of the building opposite his. She opened the window and threw something with a great force. 
In no more than a minute, Kyle jumped to his feet and ran to call the ambulance. They arrived soon and rushed the woman to a hospital. What did she throw out of the window? It was a boomerang. Hey, I didn't say all these people were smart. Do you feel like cracking another rebus puzzle? This time, a more difficult one? Take a look at this. What does it mean? Safety in numbers. <laughs> if you've managed to get through the first level, you have better logical skills than many other people. Watching more detective movies can make your observation skills sharper. If you've left behind two levels, congrats! You must have strong analytical thinking skills. Just pay a bit more attention to details. If you've passed all three levels, wow, way to go! Very few people can get to this point. You must be the one people ask for advice in tricky situations, because you can find a solution to any problem. Today, we trek into a mysterious cave teeming with treacherous traps. They will test how your brain works in extreme conditions. And if you pass them all and come out alive, congrats! You have ultimate survival skills. Please remember to share your results in the comments. Here we go. You enter the cave and find yourself in a pretty large hall where strange little people in weird masks meet and greet you. They take you to a table in the middle of the hall, and they seat you in front of it, gently but firmly. Oh. One of the masked individuals puts three muffins on the table before you. You're pleasantly surprised by their hospitality, but they start sneering under the masks, and you realize there's something wrong with the treats. It's the first trap. The person who laid out the muffins on the table explains what's inside the muffins in a creaky voice. The first one has some boiled nettle leaves in it. The second one is swarming with live ants. And the third one is seemingly filled with chocolate, but it's actually mud. So, which one would you choose to eat? Well, live ants and mud are a no-go for sure. Even though ants might actually be edible, who knows what species they belong to. And it's also yucky, truth be told. But surprisingly, boiled nettle leaves are A-OK -okay to eat, despite nettle being a plant that burns your skin upon touch. It only does so when it's fresh. Boiled leaves lose their burning quality, and nettle soup is an actual dish in many cultures. So we settle for the nettles. You've happily wolfed down the nettle muffin, quite yummy by the way, and the little masked people let you through to the next chamber. As you walk down the hall, suddenly the floor starts shaking, and before you can leap to safety, it crumbles beneath your feet, falling down and taking you with it. You hit the floor, rise to your feet, and when the dust settles, you see you've ended up in a room with three doors. Great, it's another trap. Each door has a warning sign on it, and there's also a panel with three levers marked A, B, and C. Of course. Each of the levers opens a specific combination of doors, not just a single one. The sign on the first door says it contains swarms of mosquitoes just waiting to drink you dry. There is toxic gas behind the second door, which will fill the chamber you're in as soon as you open the door. And the third door releases a powerful stream of water that will wash away everything it hits, but it will only last 30 seconds. The A lever opens the mosquito door and the gas door. Lever B will open the gas door and the water door. And the C lever will release the stream of water and the mosquitoes. Oh goody. Which one would you pull? If you chose the sea lever, you're either fortunate or have outstanding survival instincts. This combination will get you out of the trap. 30 seconds of a mighty torrent are just enough to get rid of any swarm of mosquitoes. The water and gas combo would do nothing useful, as the gas would not be washed away. And as for gas plus mosquitoes, well, you might get rid of the insects, but it wouldn't save you from the gas either. Now you dry yourself as you can after the shower and walk out of the room you were trapped in, waiting for another trap to show up. Bang! A huge boulder falls right behind you and starts rolling your way. 
You run away from it and duck into an alcove in the wall to your side. The boulder rolls past and you sigh in relief. You walk further and reach a straight hallway with rounded walls and a ceiling that slopes downwards. With a thunderous crash, another boulder smashes through the ceiling and comes barreling towards you fast. The boulder fits the tunnel perfectly, and there's no hiding place to get away from it now. A few feet ahead of you are a series of trip wires that stretch from floor to ceiling close to each other. They're very sensitive, and each one will cause a bottomless pit to open right beneath your feet if you touch it. To your left is another alcove in the wall. But if you attempt to squeeze into it, the boulder will press you with some force against the wall as it passes, and the wall has nails sticking out of it from floor to ceiling. Down by your feet is a hole in the floor, but it's only a couple of inches deep. On the bright side, there are no nails in it. So, what's your choice? A. Try to slip between the trip wires. B. Squeeze yourself into the nailed wall. Or C. Lie down in the hole in the floor. Even if you're skinny enough to gingerly slip past the trip wires without touching them, it requires some time to do so, and you don't have that luxury. The boulder is rolling right behind you, remember? Also, there's a very high risk of activating the wires and getting flung into the abyss. The hole in the floor looks like the safest option, but it's only a couple of inches deep. Unless you're just a couple of inches thick yourself, you have every chance of becoming so, thanks to the boulder behind your back. In fact, the alcove in the wall with the nails in it is your only chance of survival. Remember yogis and magicians who can sit on a bed of nails without any harm? They can do that because the principles of pressure work in this case. Pressure is force divided by area. The larger the area, the less the force and vice versa. So even if you're pressed against the nails in the wall pretty hard, they won't even break your skin because the surface area of your body is large enough to prevent that. Woo! You take a deep breath after the boulder rolls past you and go down the passage to find yourself in the next chamber. The first thing you see is a door with a large lock at the other end of the room and a timer right above it. It shows 60 minutes, and the countdown starts as soon as you enter the chamber. There, you notice three large transparent jars on the right-hand wall. Each of them contains a key which seems to fit the lock on the door. But there's an unpleasant surprise in each of the jars, too. The first jar has venomous snakes inside. The second one is full of acid. And the third one is filled with boiling hot water. You have nothing to use to get the keys out of the jar but your own hands. And the timer goes on ticking. Which jar should you choose? Snakes won't bite unless you scare them, and trying to get the key from their jar definitely qualifies as a scary action. So don't even try that one. Acid isn't an excellent choice either, obviously. The timer is actually a hint. Hot water cools down with time, and an hour is more than enough for it to become lukewarm. Just wait until it's cool enough to be bearable and get that key. You happily open the door and find yourself in an open sunny glade, somewhere deep in the unknown woods. You've made it out, but how do you get back home? In the sky, you see a helicopter flying by. It seems they don't see you. The chopper almost flies away, and you need to do something quick to make the pilot notice you. In the grass in front of you, there's a box of matches, a pile of large twigs, and a pocket mirror. What should you do? Well, you don't have time to build a fire. Your best bet is the mirror. Catch a ray of sunlight and point its reflection at the helicopter, trying to hit the windscreen with it. Yes, you've been spotted! The pilot brings the chopper down, and you've successfully escaped the treacherous cave. Ah, okay, fess up. What's your result? (laughs) You're a treasure hunter, okay? Today, you find yourself on an island. There, you'll need to crack twisted riddles, figure out the main mystery, and find the treasure. In the end, you'll calculate your points. Your old friend gave you a map of a small island for your birthday. He told you there were pirate treasures hidden in that place. Of course, you want to find them. You have a flare, a bottle of water, a compass, a flashlight, a phone, and a shovel. 
You sail to the island's southern coast and go into the jungle. Here, you see three roads with signposts. The first sign shows a bear, a lion is painted on the second one, and a pirate flag is installed in front of the third road. Which way should you follow? It's the 21st century now. The pilots have long been gone. Now there are no people on this island. It seems the flag indicates the route the pirates took when they went to hide their treasures. A lion and a bear may indeed live here, so you opt for the pirate's trail. You make your way through the dense jungle, leaving marks on trees not to get lost. Then you notice a small hut. You go inside and see a big chest with a rusty lock. Inspect the room. Is there anything here that can help you open the chest? There's a tire iron in the corner behind the broken chair. The lock seems weak, so you can easily tear it off. You open the chest and see nothing but an old map of the island. There are three marked points with treasure on the map. You leave the hut and follow the route to the first place. You find the wreckage of an old wooden ship. You wander over its deck. Suddenly, the boards crack under your feet, the floor breaks, and you fall into the hole. It's dark and cold here. You turn on your flashlight and see a chest. You touch it and hear a growl. A zombie pirate is slowly coming towards you. After a second, you realize there's nothing to be afraid of. Why so? The pirate isn't real. It's a hologram. Behind it, a small projector is installed. It creates this digital zombie pirate. You pass through the hologram and open the old chest. There are precious stones inside. You put them in your pockets, get out of the ship, and look at the diamonds. You understand they're fake and made of plastic. You open the map and cross out the dot with the first treasure. Now you go to the second chest. Along the way, you continue to mark trees. You hear some hissing sound nearby. It's a snake. You don't know if it's venomous or not. It raises its head and looks at you. What will you do? Find a long stick and point it at the snake so that the reptile attacks it. Move to a safe distance and wait for the snake to crawl away. Hiss back loudly to scare the reptile off. You need to step back slowly not to provoke the snake. Now, when you're at a safe distance, just go around and continue on your way. The map leads you to a mountain cave. It's very dark and damp inside. You take out a flashlight, but it doesn't work. The battery has run out. You go into the jungle to make a torch out of twigs and leaves. But at that moment, it starts to rain. Look carefully at the cave entrance and think about how you can light it up. The solution is in your pocket. Send the flare into the cave. The dark place gets illuminated by the red light, and you can see a chest inside. The chest is huge, but unfortunately light. Inside, you find one gold coin. It seems real, but where is the rest of the treasure? At this moment, the red light goes out, and you hear the flapping of wings. You look up and see hundreds of eyes glittering in the darkness. Bats! They scream and fly in your direction. You don't have time to run out of the cave, and there are no more flares. What are you gonna do? Hide in the chest. There's lots of space. You jump in and close the lid. Bats fly past you and beat their wings against the chest. There is a crashing sound. You can feel the ground trembling beneath you. Then, there's silence. You get out of the chest, go to the exit, and find that it's blocked by large stones. Fortunately, your phone is still working and can catch a signal. You call the rescuers and give them the coordinates of the island. That's not enough. The island is rather big, and the rescuers need the exact location. What will you tell them? (laughs) 
He went into the jungle in the southern part of the island and left lots of marks on the trees. Rescuers can find you with their help. That's all. Now you just have to wait. A few hours pass. You've drunk all the water and fallen asleep. The rays of the sun wake you up. Someone has removed the stones and cleared the exit. But who did this? Rescuers or someone else? You cross out the second place on the map and head to the last treasure point. You make your way through the jungle and notice a grizzly bear nearby. It sees you too and stands up on its hind legs. The beast looks extremely unfriendly. You scream to scare the animal away, but it's not working. What shall you do? Run as fast as possible because bears are big and clumsy. Climb the nearest tree and sit there until the bear leaves. Lie on the ground in the fetal position and don't move. Bears run fast, so it'll easily catch you. They can also climb trees. So lie down on the ground and freeze. The bear sniffs at you for a few minutes, then walks away. According to the map, you have already come to the place where the third treasure is. But there's nothing around. It must be hidden underground. Natural diamonds might be here. Gold might be hidden over there. And pearls can be right there. Where should you dig? You have already found plastic diamonds. Maybe the ones hidden here are fake too. Also, real diamonds are mined deep underground in rocks. Natural pearls are found on the seafloor. They can't be here. You need to dig the spot with the gold. You take out a shovel and dig for a few hours. You open the chest and put all the gold coins in the bag. (laughs) Now you need to get to your boat quickly. Night falls. On the way, you meet pirates. They have sabers, parrots, and eye patches. They want to catch you and take away the gold. You understand that they are not real pirates, but just pretend to be them. How did you know that? The first pirate has a watch on his wrist. The second pirate is wearing sneakers. The third pirate holds a sword. There's a price tag on the sword handle. You've exposed the pirates, but they're still going to steal the gold. You run away to hide. You see three tall trees. Which one should you climb? There's a venomous snake hidden among the leaves of the first tree. When you look at the second tree, you notice a broken branch. You climb the third tree and wait for the fake pirates to pass by. Why is everything fake here? What's happening? At that moment, you hear someone calling your name. You look down and see a zombie pirate climbing a tree. You think it's another hologram, but the pirate grabs your foot with his cold, bony hand. You scream, and the pirate disappears. Did you see a hallucination? Was it a dream or reality? How do you find out? It was a dream. It was night when you climbed the tree. It's morning now. You've been sleeping on the branch all this time. You get down and go to the boat you used to come here. It's located in the southern part of the island, and you realize you're lost. Because of the fake pirates, you missed your turn. But now, how can you find out where the south is? You need to look at the sun. It sets in the west. So you can figure out where the south is. Focus on the moss. It grows on the north side of the tree. That means the opposite side is south. What shall you choose? Or is there an easier option? You have a compass, remember? You go to the south and come to the shore, but you don't see any boat. You look around the area and realize that someone has dragged the boat into the jungle. How did you know that?
There were human footprints and a long trench left by the boat in the sand. Someone was pushing it. You follow the trail and find the boat. It's hidden among the leaves and bushes. But you don't rush to get it because it's a trap. Why do you think so? Behind the trees, you see people's silhouettes. A hand sticks out of the bushes next to the boat. You need to get out of here as soon as possible. You turn around and hear, surprise! These are your friends. They made this quest for your birthday as a present. The whole island is one big theme park dedicated to the pirate's life. All the pirates are actors, and the treasure and the sunken ship are just scenery. The snake wasn't venomous, and the bear was tame and wasn't going to charge at all. There are no real treasures. You get upset, but feel happy at the same time because you've been through a real adventure. Now it's time to see the score and find out how well you've done. 0 to 4 points. It seems you're not used to walking in the wild jungle looking for treasures. 5 to 8 points. You love adventure, but don't act like a professional. You need to train your attention and logic more. 9 to 12 points. Jungle, wild animals, a treasure map. For someone, it's a challenge, but for you, it's fun. 13 to 15 points. You're a real explorer and treasure hunter. You can easily navigate in foreign lands and cope with any problems. Emma came to the office on Monday and found out that someone had deleted an important report from her computer. She knew that in the company, there were three people who would be happy if she lost her job. Emma loved reading detective novels and even wanted to become a private detective when she was younger. That's why she knew she had to question the suspects. Laura, Emma's colleague, said, I've just arrived. Phew, the weather is awful. Such a downpour. Why are you asking me? Thomas, the accountant, answered, I was out getting coffee and I just returned. And Elisa, a new employee, said, I had a meeting with a client in a cafe. I've just come back to the office. Who might have anything to do with Emma's report? Eliza, pay attention to the suspect's feet. Thomas's and Laura's shoes are wet. They got caught in the rain, but Eliza's high heels are perfectly dry. She must have lied about going out to meet with a client. Emma found this strange. To confirm her suspicions, she decided to watch Eliza, but the very next day, the girl disappeared, along with some very important documents. Emma's boss asked her to help him return the documents. He didn't want to inform the police yet. Despite all, Emma was happy. She could fulfill her dream of becoming a detective. Eliza's computer was protected with a password. After an hour of failed attempts, Emma finally noticed a piece of paper on the floor under Eliza's desk. She picked it up. I am made up of two words joined together. I'm a dish. My first half is a famous genre. My second part is a grain. What am I? The answer to this riddle might be the password, but what is it? Popcorn. Emma managed to start the computer, and soon enough, she found a map with some coordinates. Time for some action. The map led her to a modern building. It was a gym. She entered and asked the receptionist about Eliza. But the woman refused to tell her anything unless she brought a guest pass. Once inside, Emma decided to explore the place. At one point, she entered the showers for ladies. She immediately realized something was off. But what exactly? See that man reflected in the window? Who is he? And what is he doing here? Emma was about to run out of the showers when everything went black. When she woke up sometime later, she realized she was in a small room without windows. There was a door with a combination lock. In her hand, she was clutching a note. Spelled forward were those rodents that terrify you. But what you need is spelled backward. You can't touch it, but you can see it at night. What is the password?
The rodents the note speaks about are rats. Then the word Emma needs is star. The girl managed to open the door. She rushed out of the room but stopped abruptly. She saw a large armchair. A man was sitting in it. It was the man from the showers at the gym. Here you are, he exclaimed cheerfully. I admit that at first I wanted to bring your boss down, but I've changed my mind. I want to play now. If you crack all my riddles, I'll give you the documents and let you go. Emma had nothing to do but agree. The man said, See, I have a room filled with gold. Once, three thieves sneaked into that room, but only two of them walked out. After they left, the room was empty. So, where was the third thief? The third criminal was in a wheelchair. He didn't walk. He rolled out of the room. Good job, the man shouted and pressed some buttons on the armrest of his chair. Emma screamed as she felt herself falling through the floor. It was pitch dark in the basement. Suddenly, a torch on the wall lit up. Emma saw three doors. Behind the first door, there was a dense jungle full of dangerous creatures. Behind the second door, there was a gigantic fire-breathing dinosaur whose breath could burn through any kind of material. And behind the third door, there was a lake filled with ice water. The water was so cold, it needed just a few seconds to freeze literally anything. Which door should Emma choose? She should walk through the second door. Even if dinosaurs were still around, they wouldn't be able to breathe fire. It was the correct decision. The dino turned out to be a skillfully made statue. But there was just one door leading out of the room, and it was locked too. Ah! Emma was starting to get impatient. Luckily, there was another note with a hint. There were drawings on it. A banana, a sunflower, a rainbow, and an apple. Emma thought for a while, then pressed four numbers on the panel near the door. The code was correct, and the door opened. What numbers did the girl press? One, three, seven, one. Each digit corresponds to the number of colors of the objects in the picture. Emma saw a long corridor. She'd been walking for a while when she realized that the corridor was about to split into three passageways. They were signed West, East, South. She also saw this inscription on the wall. Which corridor should she choose? Emma tilted her head and looked at the inscription upside down. This way, it read, South. That's where she needed to go. Soon, the girl saw three doors on her way. On the floor, there were three keys that could open these three doors. What is the biggest number of attempts she will need to figure out the key for each door? Six, three attempts for the first key and all three doors. Two attempts for the second key and the remaining two doors. And one attempt for the third key and the last door. Emma decided to go through the left door. And guess what? She ended up in the room with the armchair again. The man was there too. He asked her, Today is Friday. You need to do something 72 days later. What day of the week will it be? Emma understood it really fast, it would be Sunday. Look, 72 days equals 10 weeks plus 2 days. And 2 days from Friday, that's Sunday. The man was getting irritated. Well, and how good are you at math? Look at this sequence. What are the next two numbers? The next two numbers should be 20 and 28. There are two groups of numbers in this sequence, 11, 14, and 17, and 19, 22, and 25. 
In both of them, each next number is three more than the previous one. It means that in the first group, the next number is 20, and in the second group, 28. Then, the man offered Emma a bet. He said he would put one red and one blue marble in a box. If the girl picked a blue marble, he would let her go. But if she got the red marble, she would have to stay and help him around the house for a year. Emma knew that the man was going to cheat, because why would he take a risk like that? He would probably put two red marbles instead of one red and one blue. But how can she prove it? After thinking for a while, she managed to win the bet. How did she do it? Emma picked a marble and quickly put it in her mouth without showing it to the man. The marble that remained in the box was red. According to the rules, it meant that the marble Emma had chosen was blue. The man didn't want to admit that he had tried to cheat. Okay, I'm not going to go back on my word, but here's the last riddle. If you crack it, you're free to go. How can you turn six into an odd number? Emma didn't need to think much. She removed the letter S, which left IX. That's the number 9 in Roman numerals. And this number is odd. The man could do nothing. He gave Emma the documents and let her go. The girl was happy. Do you think she should pursue the career of a detective? That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. Well, well, you're a private detective. You work in a city inhabited by people and magical creatures. You're going to have a rough night. The full moon is coming. It's the time when people and monsters go crazy. Like any detective, you write down your guesses in a diary so that you can summarize the results later. It's afternoon now. You're sitting in your office. Lightning strikes in the sky and someone knocks on the door at the same time. A pale woman enters the room and asks for help. You notice a bracelet on her arm. Her zombie brother is accused of stealing some jewelry, but she's sure he is not guilty. She asks you to prove it. You arrive at the store. On a broken display case where the jewelry used to be, you notice fingerprints. There are three suspects, a werewolf, an elf, and a zombie. Which of them is the thief? The elf. The zombie has skeleton hands, and the werewolf has hairy paws. Only the elf could leave human-like fingerprints. You drive through the streets and see a group of suspicious people standing by the riverbank. You stop and get out of the car. The people notice you and sprint in the opposite direction. You run after them on the sand along the water, but can't catch up. You look around, but don't see anyone. Then you figure out it was your hallucination triggered by long, sleepless nights. How did you figure that out? You ran after these people on the sand, but you can only see the footprints of your boots. You're walking back to the car and hear some screams coming from the water. A woman is calling for help. You run into the river and swim toward the drowning woman. But when you approach her, you see three people. They're all screaming, but only one of them is a real human and needs help. The rest are mermaids who want to lure you to their kingdom. How can you find out who the real woman is? Dive and check who has a fishtail. You save the woman and go to the car. It starts raining. You don't want to catch a cold, so you decide to change your clothes in your apartment. But suddenly, you hear someone scream for help outside. You run out of the apartment and forget to lock the door. A woman is crying in the street. She's standing near the road. In the distance, you can see a car leaving at high speed. The woman says her new car has just been stolen. You get into your vehicle and start chasing the criminal. The suspect gets out of the car and runs toward an abandoned house. He climbs over the fence and disappears inside. You go there after him. In a small hall, five zombies are walking in different directions. But zombies don't drive cars. One of them is the thief pretending to be a zombie. Who is it exactly?
zombies don't sweat. But one of the creatures you see is covered with sweat. That's because it's the criminal who has been running away from you. You walk through the streets. There's a warning on a post about lizard people charging at the inhabitants of the city. You remember investigating this case, but you couldn't find these reptiles. Now you need to go to the park. For several days, a large werewolf has been scaring the residents there. You know that the werewolf has a wife, and she is the only person who can calm the monster down and help him return to his human form. You have found three girls. Each of them might be the werewolf's wife you're looking for. You ask his wife to approach him, but none of the girls admits she's the one you need. So you have to make your own choice. Do you see some wool on this girl's clothes? It's the wolf's fur, which means she's the wife. She walks up to the monster, hugs it, and the werewolf turns into a human. You're hungry. You drop by a pizzeria. The owner of the restaurant says that someone has taken all his weekly earnings from the safe. The thief wore gloves and left no fingerprints. The video cameras were turned off. You know this pizzeria has had several similar incidents over the past year. Every time, the insurance company paid the owner the entire amount that had been stolen. You're sure the owner took his own money to use the insurance again. Take a look at the office and prove that the owner is guilty. Look at the air vent. Behind the grated hatch, you can see the bundles of the stolen money you've been looking for. There's a long night ahead, and you're feeling sleepy. You go to a small cafe to get a coffee. You give the money to the saleswoman and take the cup with a drink. You take a sip and realize the woman is in danger right now. How do you know that? Help me is written on the cup she's just given you. You decide not to leave the cafe and sit down at the table. You can see a man in a black raincoat and hood sitting at the other end of the room. The girl behind the cash register is looking at him wearily. You look at this visitor for a few seconds and realize he's a vampire. What makes you think that? It's night outside. You can see your reflection in the window. The hooded man is sitting by the window, too, but isn't reflected in it. He's a vampire. The coffee has cheered you up a little. You're walking along the street, lost in thought. That's why you don't notice an open maintenance hole in front of you. You fall and find yourself in a dark sewer. Pew! Fortunately, you're not hurt. Shh! You can hear some noise at a distance. You turn on your flashlight and slowly walk forward. Soon, you come across a cage with several people inside. They say a mad scientist caught them and put them in this cage to conduct experiments. You need to free the prisoners. But where can you find the key? Carefully inspect the laboratory. One of the jars with chemicals standing on the shelf has a key inside. You take it out and are about to open the cage, but the scientist returns. He tells you not to do this. The people inside are actually mutant lizards. The scientist admits that he accidentally turned regular crocodiles into humans. The scientist managed to catch these monsters and put them in this cage. He's going to turn them back into reptiles and let them go. The prisoners say they are humans, and the scientist lies. Who do you believe? You decide not to open the cage. Inside, next to the people, you can see pieces of faded skin and scales. Snakes and other reptiles shed during molting. You believe the scientist, and he promises that he will soon fix everything. You're back in the street. It's as dirty and uncomfortable here as in the sewer. Nearby, a bolt of lightning strikes something. You hear someone screaming and run there. A multi-story building is on fire. An old lady is crying. She's left her cat in the apartment. Firefighters may not be able to save it, so you decide to do it yourself. You go up to the top floor using an old fire escape. It collapses behind you. Fortunately, you manage to jump into the window. 
You're in the old lady's apartment. Several floors lead to different rooms. You don't have time to check each of them. The fire is getting closer. Where is the cat? That door is scratched at the bottom. Those are claw marks. The cat must be there. You open the door and see a big black cougar. The fire is everywhere, and you can't go out through the main entrance. There is a window leading to the backyard and a fire escape. Where will you go? The fire escape collapsed when you were trying to get into the apartment. In the window, you see the tree. It has stopped raining, but it's already morning. Tired, you reach your apartment. You turn the key, open the door, go inside, and realize that someone is here. How have you found out? You were in a hurry and forgot to lock the apartment door while leaving. Someone got in and locked the door from the inside, and you had to use the key to open it. You see a human silhouette standing in the shadows and realize that you know this person. Who is it? It's the woman who asked you to help her brother. She was wearing a red bracelet. The silhouette has the same accessory. I came here to thank you in person. The door was open, but you weren't at home, the woman says. She asks, how many puzzles have you solved tonight? You realize it's time to look at what you've got. 0 to 3 points. It's too early for you to go out to patrol the streets of a dangerous city and help people. You need more experience. Practice and solve more logical puzzles. 4 to 8 points. Not bad. You've solved more than half of your cases. The city is grateful for that. 9 to 11 points. You're one of the best detectives in this city. Every day, you help people but you feel that you can do better. 12 to 14 points. The sirens of police cars, screams, suspicious faces in dark alleys. You can't live without it, and the city can't live without you. Anna went on vacation to Hawaii and stayed at a luxury hotel. The hotel manager told her that they had only three empty rooms left. Anna could choose the room she liked best. Can you help her make a wise choice? There's no mosquito net on the window in the second room, and something's wrong with the door handle in the third room. So, Anna should choose the first room. Anna went to the hotel swimming pool. She spotted three odd details in the area right away. Can you see them too? There's no ladder in the pool. There are two suns in the sky, and this guy is sunbathing in a winter coat. After lunch, Anna decided to go on a boat trip. At the pier, she met three sailors. Bob offered her a three-hour sailing and fishing trip for $10 only. Kyle offered Anna a personal diving class for $200, and Daniela offered to have a boat trip around the coastal cliffs for free. But only one of these offers is actually a good deal. Can you guess which one? Kyle's offer is overpriced. Look at the poster hanging at the pier. It advertises personal diving classes for $20. And Daniela's offer isn't safe. Her boat has a broken bottom. That's why Anna should accept Bob's offer. Anna woke up on a deserted island in the middle of a hot day. The sun was shining very bright, so she needed to find a water source as soon as possible. There's the sea nearby, but she can't drink salty water. She found an abandoned cabin that contained some really handy items. Two empty paint cans, one large and one small, a roll of aluminum foil, one baseball, an old pair of sneakers, and some other useful things. Which one of these additional items can Anna use to combine with the previous items to obtain drinking water? A book? A handful of tiny pebbles or a plastic bag?
the book is useless in this context. The pebbles can be found all over the shore. As for the plastic bag, Anna can fill one half of the larger paint can with seawater, then put the smaller can inside of it. Next, she should use the laces from the sneakers to pull the plastic bag tight over the large can. And finally, place the baseball on top of the plastic bag directly above the smaller can to make a small indentation. Then, just leave this construction in the sun. Drinking water will evaporate and condense on the plastic bag. The indentation will push the water into the smaller paint can. Anna decided to explore the island. Soon, she found a tunnel and got lost inside it. At the bottom of the tunnel, Anna saw three pits leading to freedom. But, unfortunately, every pit is hiding some danger. A huge squid is hiding in the first pit. There's a hungry hyena in the second pit. And there's a poisonous porcupine hiding on the third path. Can you help Anna choose the safest way to escape? Anna should choose the pit with the squid. They can't live in conditions that differ from the marine habitat. Therefore, she should wait for a while. The squid will get weaker and she'll be able to escape safely. Anna got hungry and went to the jungle to find some food. But she's not alone here. Can you find any hidden animals in this picture? There are six animals in the jungle. Here they are. A butterfly, an alligator, a rabbit, a camel, a snake, and a deer. Finally, Anna found three bushes with berries. They all look delicious, but only one of them is safe to eat. Can you help Anna make the right choice? She should take a look at the monkeys. They stay away from the first bush because it's a mutant plant. See? It has teeth and emanates toxic gases. Meanwhile, the monkeys enjoy berries from the second and third bushes. But a cobra is hiding under the third bush. So the second bush is the safest choice. Anna got sunburned during her walk. Which item from the cabin can she use to cool down? Aluminum foil? Fresh water from the paint can? or the sponge with some seawater. The sponge with salty water will only make it worse for Anna's irritated skin. And the drinking water is too precious to waste on bathing. Meanwhile, metallic foil is a great tool to cool down a shelter. Anna can cover the roof and the cabin walls and deflect some of the sun's heat. The next day, Anna continued her travel around the island and came across an abandoned village. She found a car with the keys still in it. The car was parked outside the local library, but before Anna could do something about it, a nearby volcano erupted. She didn't see any signs of glowing red lava, but a huge cloud of black smoke was moving towards her. It'll reach the place where Anna's standing in a minute. What should she do? 1. Head down to the library's basement, which is filled with vampire bats. 2. Take the stairs to the library's roof and hide there. Or, take the car and try to ride away. Volcanic dust is very hot and moves at high speed. Anna cannot either outrun the dust or hide from the clouds on the roof. So the safest option is to lock herself in the basement with creepy bat neighbors. In the basement, Anna noticed a big wall clock. It happened when the minute and hour hand was precisely between 1 and 2. She saw that both hands lay on top of each other. Can you guess what the time was? Twelve o'clock. Both minute and hour hands lay exactly between the number 1 and 2 in the middle of the number 12. Anna looked around and found a secret passage in the basement. She entered the passage and fell into a subterranean river, which carried her away to a large waterfall and then to a much bigger river surrounded by rocky cave walls. 
She tried to swim away, but the force of the waterfall had created a reverse current, pulling her backwards with an intense force. Anna needs to act fast. What would you suggest? Swim onward through the crashing water, swim to the side and try to climb the walls, or dive as deep as possible and then swim out of the waterfall's pull. Swimming onward isn't an option. The current will pull her back anyway. The chances of directly overcoming the forces of the water are zero. But if Anna goes downward as deep as possible where the water current is not so strong, she still has a good chance to escape. As soon as Anna got outside, she met a wicked witch. She offered Anna a deal. You need to run one of these three tunnels colored red, blue, and yellow. Two of them lead to a black hole, while another leads to your hotel room. Listen to my clues very carefully. Choose the reed and you won't disappear. It's a lie to say that blue isn't dissimilar. The yellow doesn't have less in common with the red than the blue. Can you help Anna make the right choice? The witch said that the red tunnel won't not make her disappear, which means that Anna will disappear. So we can exclude the red one, and the yellow doesn't have less in common with the red than the blue, which means that the yellow does have more in common with the red. So now we can exclude the yellow one as well. Anna should choose the blue tunnel. You return from a lunch break and discover that someone has stolen $30 from your bag. There are four suspects. Mila, Henry, Jackson, and Victoria. When you ask them about the money, Mila replies she hasn't taken it. Henry says he's pretty sure Jackson's got the money. Jackson shouts, no way, Henry's lying. And Victoria claims Mila's telling the truth. Only one of these people isn't lying. Who stole your money? It's Mila. She, Henry, and Victoria are lying, while Jackson's telling the truth. If anyone else had taken your $30, there would be more than one person telling the truth. How can you get from 98 to 720 just by using one letter? Add the letter X between 90 and 8. You'll get 90 times 8 equals 720. The owner of the restaurant, Vegan Paradise, called the police. He was in a panic. Someone has attacked our chef. He was taken to a hospital several minutes ago. Our rivals must have sent someone to ruin my business. When the police officers came to the restaurant, they learned that three people had been in the staff area during the accident. The first cook was cutting onions when the chef was hurt. He told the police his vision had been blurred because of the tears and he hadn't seen anything. The second cook was peeling shrimp when the accident happened. He said he'd been listening to music through his earphones and he hadn't heard anything. The third person, a waitress, claimed she had been serving lemonade outside. Who's lying? The second cook attacked the chef. Shrimps in a vegan restaurant? Really? And how fast will you find the answer to this riddle? It equals 4. Cat equals 6. Time equals 8. Hippo equals 10. Cheetah equals... The answer is 14. Each letter equals 2. Brenda was traveling by train. It was scorching hot in the carriage. The girl took off her gold bracelet decorated with diamonds and put it on the table in front of her. Several minutes later, the train entered a tunnel and it got pitch dark. When the tunnel was left behind, there was no bracelet on the table. Oh, no. Brenda was shocked. Someone's taken my bracelet. There were just three other people in the compartment. Helen said she'd been sleeping. Rachel was reading a book on her phone 
and Gregory had gone to the bathroom even before the train entered the tunnel. Who took the bracelet? It was Helen. Before she had her sleeves rolled up, but now they cover her arms down to the wrists, hiding the bracelet. What usually happens with plants in math classrooms? They grow square roots. A man walked into a room and saw three doors. The first one had a sign which read, To the Swamps. On the second door, there was a note, Lion's Den. The third door didn't have any sign, but the man knew for sure where it led. How? It was the door he had entered through. A baby giraffe doubled in height every month till it reached its dad's size. It took 10 months. How many months did it take the baby giraffe to grow half its current height? Nine months. Now, have a look at these two guys. What do you think? Who will not survive? Most likely the guy on the left. His slingshot sure can cause some harm to the guy on the right, but he'll definitely survive. But should he step off the wooden board, the other guy will immediately fall into an abyss. A rich man, Mr. Thomas Green, disappeared right from his home. The detective assigned to this case found a note at the crime scene. It read, 1st of January, 4th of October, 5th of March, 3rd of June. The detective guessed that the criminal's name was hidden in the note. The suspects were Jack Green, the rich man's son and heir, June Green, the man's wife, and John Jacobson, Mr. Green's employee. The detective deduced the name of the culprit in no time. Can you do the same? These dates supposedly stand for the letters you need in the words. For example, means the first letter of the word January, J, and so on. It turns out John Jacobson has something to do with Mr. Green's disappearance. Try to crack this one. Quote, oh, 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 oh. That's pot eight O's, which is potatoes. One end, three end, five end, seven end. This rebus hides odds and ends. Knee friended, what can it mean? It's a friend in need. A student put his final exam paper into the pile of other students' papers. The professor told him, I saw you were cheating on the exam. You'll get an automatic fail. Strangely, the student just walked away. When the exam scores were announced, he found out he had an A. How come? The professor didn't know who the student was. That's why he graded his paper just like anyone else's. You're playing table tennis when your ball falls into a one-foot deep narrow metal pipe sticking out of the concrete floor. How can you get the ball out of the pipe if all you have is your tennis paddle, a plastic bottle filled with water, and your shoelaces? Pour the water from your bottle into the hole and the ball will rise to the surface. You have an equation made of matchsticks. 6 plus 4 equals 4. Move just one matchstick to make it true.
You need to take one matchstick from the plus sign and add it to the 6, so it makes 8. Then you'll have 8 minus 4 equals 4. Once, a famous young singer, Brianna, who recorded her first album only a half a year ago, was invited to perform at a concert. But when it was her turn to sing, Brianna didn't appear on the stage. She was found unconscious on the floor in her dressing room. When the police arrived, they questioned three other singers who had to perform that day. Camila said, I'm new to show business, so I came up to Brianna to ask for some advice, but I didn't hit her. Scarlett exclaimed, My younger brother is Brianna's fan. He's been listening to her for years. I've even taken her photograph from him. And Sophia told the police, I didn't even see Brianna. I was too nervous before going on stage to leave my dressing room. Who hit Brianna? It was Scarlett. She said her brother had been Brianna's fan for years, but the singer recorded her first song only six months ago. I'll give you three clues, and your task is to find a four-digit number. Its first digit is useless. The second and fourth digits are mirror images of each other. And the third digit is half the second. This number is 0848. 0 is the number of no use. 8s mirror each other, and 4 is half of 8. It's rarely touched but often held, and if you're smart, you'll use it well. What is it? It's your tongue. Two planes took off at the same moment. They both had to fly across the Atlantic, but one plane departed from New York and headed for Paris, and the other left Paris and flew to New York. The first plane's speed was 650 miles per hour, and the other one was moving at a speed of 700 miles per hour. Which plane was closer to Paris when they met? They were both the same distance from Paris since they met in the same place. Your company produces shoes and has two factories in different cities. The workers of both factories steal shoes. You can't use any additional security, but you have to make it stop. How can you do it? One factory should start making only left shoes and the other only right ones. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. Karen is at a corporate party. Her boss, Mia, brings a bunch of identical envelopes and says, I personally put the grand prize in one of these envelopes. It's a certificate for a trip to Bali. But no worries, the remaining envelope contains consolidation prizes prepared by our sponsors. Can you help Karen win the trip to Bali? There's a lipstick print on this envelope. Mia has a similar lip color. She said that she had personally packed only one envelope, so the grand prize should be here. The day of Karen's flight to Bali has finally come. She calls a taxi to the airport. Soon, three identical taxis arrive at her porch. Uh -oh. But only one of these drivers can actually give Karen a safe ride. Can you guess who? The second car has a flat tire, and the driver of the third taxi is a werewolf. Take a look at his claws. It's a full moon, so he'll turn into a wolf soon. Therefore, Karen should choose the first taxi. Karen's luggage is too heavy, so she goes to the cash register to pay for the excess. Oh no, her card holder is gone. Karen asks three people standing nearby, have you seen a pink card holder? 
The cleaner says, I found two lost wallets today, but none of them look like yours. The cashier says, I was busy with another customer, so I didn't look around. And another passenger says, Don't waste time, honey. Block your cards as soon as possible. Who stole the wallet? Nobody. Karen put it in the fold of her hat and forgot it there. See? On the plane, the steward asks Karen to switch seats with another passenger. Karen can choose one of these three seats. Can you help her figure out the best option? This man has very long legs, so he'll probably kick the back of Karen's chair all along. The second option is next to this elegant lady, but she's stealing money from another passenger. Probably not the best company for a long hour flight. Although the third guy looks like a vampire, it's just a costume. He's sitting by the window, but the sun rays don't bother him, so he's the best option. Karen arrives at a fancy hotel in Bali. The manager shows her the three best bungalows uh -oh. to choose from, but only one of them is safe enough. Can you help Karen to make the best choice? The first bungalow doesn't have a door, which makes Karen an easy target for robbers and mosquitoes. And there's a scorpion under the bed in the third bungalow, so she should choose the second one. On the beach, Karen meets three ladies who claim to be millionaires and show her pictures to prove it. But one of them is fake rich. Can you guess who? It's the first lady. She's just modeling for an electric toothbrush commercial. So her luxury is artificial. Karen is walking down the shore and sees a party. It's a beach wedding, so the bride and groom don't wear traditional costumes. Can you find the newlyweds among these people? Take a look at the cake. The letters say Harry plus Amy. This lady is wearing a necklace with the name Amy, so she's the bride. And now look at the flower garland around her neck. Only one person is wearing the identical garland, this guy, so he's probably the groom. Karen spots her former classmate, Tom, among the guests. He's talking to a strange lady. The lady is wearing a hoodie and standing with her back turned to Karen. So Karen can't see her face. Tom and the lady leave together and hide from everyone on the roof of the beach restaurant where the party takes place. Later that night, Karen also visits the roof. There's no one else here, but after checking the roof, Karen knows for sure which of these three ladies is Tom's secret girlfriend. How did she know? The third lady's dress is decorated with gold sequins. She lost one sequin on the roof. Tom sees Karen and invites her for a walk along the shore. She spots four weird things right away. Uh -oh. Can you see them too? A mermaid is hiding in the waves. This sandcastle has electric lighting. Tree branches flutter in the wind to the right, but the flags to the left. And finally, the moon has a creepy face. The next morning, Karen goes to the buffet breakfast. She wants to get a smoothie, but there's no information about the ingredients in English. Uh -oh. Unfortunately, Karen is allergic to strawberries. Can you figure out which smoothies are safe for her? It's all about the color. Only the green and yellow smoothies don't contain any strawberries for sure. Other options are risky. Karen enters a spa center. The manager asks her to wait for 15 minutes. Karen takes a seat and falls asleep. 
She wakes up after a while and finds out that someone had given her a heart-shaped tattoo. She questions three suspects. Bobby, the client, says, Lady, I've just arrived on my motorbike. If I see any crazy tattoo artists around here, I'll tell you. Leah says, I've been cleaning the bathroom within the last 30 minutes. And Tony, the massage therapist, says, Sorry, I was busy with my client, so I didn't look at you at all. Who's lying? Bobby, this motorbike has flat tires, and besides, it was already there when Karen entered the spa. Luckily, the tattoo was temporary, and the massage therapist helped Karen to remove it, but he charged her $5 for his help. Karen arrived at the spa during happy hours when they offer a 45% discount on all services, so Karen paid only $12 for a one-hour massage. Also, she had a pedicure for $7. When Karen left, she found a $50 bill on the ground. How much money did Karen spend in total? Can you count? Karen spent a total of $24. As for this $50 bill, it's fake, so it doesn't make any difference. Karen brings her clothes to the local laundry owned by three sisters. She returns to pick up her stuff in five hours. Unfortunately, someone has burned her favorite dress with an iron. Karen gets furious and questions the sisters. Mia says, I didn't iron today. It must be Pia. Pia says, nah, I was planting roses in the garden all day. It must be Gia. And Gia says, I don't know who's guilty because I've been away all day. Who burned Karen's dress? It was Pia. Take a look at the garden. Can you see any roses? Exactly. Karen returns to her hotel room and finds a huge bouquet in a vase. The note says, love, your secret admirer. Karen calls the reception to find out more. The manager says, one of the hotel's male guests ordered the flowers, but I can't reveal his name. Only three male guests stay in this hotel at the moment, Hans, Jacques, and Will. Karen meets them all at the beach and spots her secret admirer right away. Do you have any clue who it might be? Karen received pink lilies. Take a look at Hans's shirt. It has a print with pink lilies. He loves these flowers, but this doesn't prove anything. Will has a tan line from a wedding ring and he's taking pictures of his wife surfing. But Jacques is writing in the sand and his handwriting looks suspiciously similar to the love note. Spotted! Karen and Jacques go for a walk. He brings her to a pier with three boats. Jacques says, If you manage to guess where my boat is, I'm going to give it away to you. Can you help Karen find the right answer? Someone sleeping on the second boat, but this doesn't mean that the person is the owner. The third boat is called Jacques, but this name is quite popular. Let's take a closer look at the first boat. Can you see the red trousers on a hanger? They match perfectly with Jacques' jacket. Therefore, this is his boat. Miss Harrelson called the police and reported that someone had broken into her house. When the officers arrived, they found the woman tied up to a chair. She said a man in a black mask had entered her house and tied her up so that she couldn't even move. Then he had stolen all her savings and left. But the officers didn't believe Ms. Harrelson and arrested her for misreporting. Why? If the woman couldn't move, how did she manage to call the police? It was Hazley's birthday. Her parents said that they had a present for her, but she had to find it first. To help the girl, they gave her a note that said, where should the girl look for her present? It 
it seems as if the note doesn't make any sense. But that's only because the two halves of each word are switched. If Hazley places them in the correct order, she'll get pretty straightforward instructions. Your present is hidden in the basement. Sydney told her mother that she and her gymnastics team were going to a sports camp for the weekend. Mrs. Stevenson knew her daughter well and suspected it was just an excuse. Sydney was going to spend the weekend with her boyfriend instead. Still, the woman helped Sydney pack and let her go. When the girl returned, she was angry with her mom for forgetting to pack a toothbrush. That was when Mrs. Stevenson realized she had been right and Sydney hadn't been to the sports camp. How did she figure it out? When she packed Sydney's things, she put the toothbrush in the bag with her gymnastics clothing. If her daughter had indeed been to the sports camp, she'd have opened the bag and found the toothbrush. But she didn't, which means she never used that bag. Look at these people who are doing their grocery shopping. One of them has stolen a watermelon. Can you tell who? It must be this guy on the right. He's holding a soccer ball, but it looks as if it's very heavy. And since soccer balls don't weigh much, it must be a disguised watermelon. Mason went on an expedition to Antarctica. His boss asked him to send pictures as proof that he was actually there. Mason sent pictures every day, but when he returned from the expedition, his boss fired him. Take a closer look at the pictures and try to understand what his boss didn't like. Mason was sent to Antarctica, but in some pictures, you can see palm trees. No wonder the boss realized the photos were photoshopped and Mason hadn't gone there at all. An old man had extremely poor vision. He was living with his son, Mark, because he needed assistance all the time. One day, the man was resting in his armchair while his son was preparing dinner. Suddenly, Mark heard glass shatter. The man ran into the room and saw that the window was broken. He asked what had happened. His father told him that some dark-eyed, dark-haired guy had thrown a stone into the window and shattered it. Then he ran away. But Mark didn't believe his father. Why? The man had extremely poor vision, and he wasn't wearing his glasses at the time of the accident. He couldn't see the guy, let alone the color of his hair and eyes. Savannah went on a business trip with her husband. In the evening, the woman didn't feel well and suddenly blacked out. When Savannah woke up a couple of hours later, she couldn't remember anything. There were two men in front of her and both claimed to be her husband. The woman couldn't remember which of them was her real husband. Can you help her figure it out? They went to a business meeting. That's why they are both dressed accordingly. The guy in a hoodie doesn't look formal, so her husband must be the other one, the man who's wearing a suit. Now, this girl, Susanna, can't remember who her husband is too. Can you help her? It must be this guy. Look, he's wearing a ring while the other doesn't seem to be married. Ava's parents, John and Catherine, came to the hospital to pick up the teenager. Can you tell which of these young people is their child? It's this girl. John and Catherine are Ava's parents. Ava is a girl's name, and she's the only girl in the room. Esme was having her usual walk in the forest. By nighttime, she realized she had gotten lost again. She was wandering around until she came across the witch's house. The girl petted the cat, (laughs) greeted the witch, and asked the woman to send her home. At that time, the witch was participating in a math tournament for witches from all over the world. She really wanted to win and to prove she was the smartest witch out there. There was one last task she couldn't solve. The witch promised that if Esme helped her, she'd let her go home. If not, Esme would have to stay with the witch forever. Here's the task. 
make three identical squares by moving only three matches. You just have to move these three matches over there. It works, and Esme can return home. Thor asked his friends to guess what his laptop's three-digit password was. Each of them made a guess. The numbers they chose were 357, 902, 907, 954. Even though no one's guess was right, every person guessed one digit correctly and exactly in its right place. Can you figure out Thor's passcode? Since just one of them guessed one digit correctly, the first digit can't be 9. In this case, three people would have guessed it right. And there wouldn't be enough people to guess the third digit. The only other option for the first digit is 3, which means the second digit can't be 5 and the third one can't be 7. Since the second one can't be 5, then it's 0. Two people guessed it correctly. And the third digit is 4. If it was 2, it would mean someone guessed two digits correctly, 0 and 2. But that's not true. So, Thor's code is 304. Students were divided into two teams to do one task. Storm, Dean, and Brooke were in Team Yellow. Elsie, Emma, and Veda were in Team Purple. Following the same logic, what group does Lexi belong to? In Team Yellow, there are students whose names have just one syllable. In Team Purple, there are students with the names that consist of two syllables. Lexi's name has two syllables, so she belongs to Team Purple. Atlas got trapped in the attic of an old house. There are just three ways out, and all of them dangerous. Behind the first door, the roof and the floor are made out of magnifying glass, and the sun will burn anyone who comes in. Behind the second door, there's a room filled with poisonous gas. And the third door is hiding a hungry lion. How can Atlas escape? He should wait until it's night. The sun will set, and the guy will safely walk through the first door. Now, take a look at Iris and her close friends. Max, Jenny, Josh, and Ren. Who's her partner? It must be Josh. Look, they have matching tattoos. On a rainy night, Dylan was driving past a bus stop. There were three people there. An elderly lady who was feeling unwell, a doctor who saved many lives, and Selena, a girl Dylan had been crushing on for years. Unfortunately, there was only room for one more person in the car. What should Dylan do? He should give his car to the doctor, who would take the elderly lady and driver to the hospital. And Dylan can stay at the bus stop with the girl of his dreams. Charlie, Andy, Taylor, and Alex are all related to each other. But one of them is the opposite gender from the other three. Here's what you know. Alex is either Charlie's brother or Charlie's only daughter. Alex's sister is either Andy or Taylor. Taylor's only son is either Charlie or Andy. Can you tell who's the opposite gender from the other three? If Alex is Charlie's only daughter, then Alex cannot have a sister. It means that Alex is Charlie's brother. If Alex's sister is Andy, then Andy's a girl. And according to fact 3, Charlie is Taylor's only son. But Alex is Charlie's brother. So we have a contradiction here. It means that Alex's sister is Taylor. So Taylor's a girl. Charlie, Alex, and Taylor are siblings. And Andy is Taylor's son. Keenan was watching TV when a detective arrived with the search warrant. The detective said that the city bank had been robbed and Keenan was the main suspect. The man replied that he hadn't even left the house that day. He couldn't do anything. The police didn't find the money, but still arrested the man. Why?
Keenan said he hadn't left the house. But take a look at the calendar and the grocery store receipt. The dates are the same. It means Keenan at least did some grocery shopping and lied about not leaving the house. Wow! While working late at night in a top-secret laboratory, Michael finally managed to create the DNA of a hybrid monstrous creature. After all that hard work, he decided to grab a quick coffee and donut as a little reward. But he came back and saw that the specimen had disappeared from the incubator. Hmm. Michael lined up Ryan, Jeff, and Laura and confronted them. Who took an important top-secret piece of research I was working on? Ryan said he'd been busy doing some additional research on a separate project and had no idea what was going on. Jeff said he hadn't touched the hybrid creature and had been in the archives digging through some files he needed. And Laura said she'd been in the bathroom the whole time. So who took the specimen? Michael never mentioned that he was dealing with a hybrid monstrous creature. Jeff just let himself get caught. Better think smart next time. Anne absolutely loathes winter. But just like anyone else, she has to go out and do stuff. She had just moved to a snowy city for work and experiences some of the coldest winters. But she managed to make it to the mall to do some quick shopping through a huge blizzard. When she came back to her parked car, she discovered that someone broke into it and took her belongings. When the police lined up the three suspects, they each gave their stories. Francesca said she had been polishing her car outside and didn't know anything. Ned said he had been shopping for clothes, and Earl said he had been sitting in a cafe on the upper floor of the mall. The police arrested the suspect. Who was it? Francesca. She was polishing her car outside in the middle of a blizzard? That's not only illogical, but not safe either. She just gave herself away. You wake up and find yourself trapped in a room with four doors in front of you. You don't have enough time to choose which door leads to freedom. You hear a monster coming, so you check out the doors quickly. The leftmost door has a sign on it saying, take the door on the right to break free. The second door also has a sign saying, it's the right door. The third door has a sign, freedom is just right in front of you. And the last door has a sign, don't trust the signs. Which door should you choose? The last door. It says not to trust the signs, but it doesn't mean that they're lying. The first door says to take the door on the right. Not necessarily the last door on the right, but just the one on the right. The second one says it's the right door. Not the correct door, but the right door, as in the door on the right. The third door says freedom is just right in front of you. That just doesn't make any sense, does it? So it's the last door on the right that leads to freedom. Mason was extremely happy when he got the news that his sister Jane was coming to town. He had just started a new job and couldn't wait to host her for the first time. She was only able to see some nice pictures of the places he visited, including where he lived. When he picked her up from the airport, he noticed something slightly off about her. She was robotic with her responses and seemed stiff with her movements. She wouldn't eat and only insisted that she wanted to rest up. Strange. Had he been watching too much sci-fi? After a while, Mason hears a knock on the door, and to his surprise, it's Jane. But I thought… Jane tells him that the Jane in his apartment is an imposter. When the Jane in the bedroom goes out and sees the other Jane sitting on the couch, they're both in shock. They both try to convince Mason that they're the real Jane. But who will Mason believe? normal to come back from a trip pretty tired and wanting to rest. 
But how did the second Jane know where Mason lived without prior knowledge? And she didn't even break a sweat running up to the apartment. On a nice day, Vivian, who lived in a town on the seashore, decided to go for a hike alone. But after hours of trekking, she ended up on a section of the forest she wasn't familiar with. Before her were three paths. One path had bare footprints leading away. Another had human shoe prints. And the third was right by the river. Which one should Vivian take to find her way? The river path. Since she lives in a coastal town, the river mouth most likely ends up in the sea. That way, she could figure out where she is. Melissa is sharing a train car with three other people. It's a very hot day, and the air conditioner doesn't even work. James starts complaining and only calms down after opening the window. Melissa lays down her red silk scarf her grandmother gave her next to her. Judith compliments it. Robert, a senior, mentions that he forgot to bring a gift for his wife who will pick him up from the train station. James has a crush on Judith. After a while, Melissa goes to the bathroom and comes back to find the scarf missing. Who was the one who took it? None of them. It was a hot day and James opened the window. The wind sent the scarf flying right out of it. Some zombies have Diego trapped in a room. They're surrounding him. He's stuck and can't escape. Their arms are breaking in and reaching for him. When Diego looks around, he realizes that he's in a small newspaper stand with magazines and pocketbooks. And looking around him more attentively, he finds a roll of tape nearby. How can he avoid those nasty bites? The only way for Diego to escape will be to tape those magazines around crucial parts of his body where they can't lay his teeth on him. It'll be light enough for him to run away from the zombies without getting hurt. Plus, he'll have plenty of reading material for the road. Evan got lost in a forest, and just his luck, it was snowing. The only thing the police searching for him found were four parallel lines leading into the forest. Something doesn't seem right, they thought, and took several people into questioning. Nick said he had been at the store buying some groceries. Vanessa said she had been babysitting. Christina had been at work the whole time. After hearing the stories, they arrested Nick. Why? Nick was in a wheelchair. The four parallel lines were left by Nick rolling into the forest and back out. It's the beginning of a new school year, and Dave started a new job as a computer studies teacher at a local high school. Another fellow teacher, Roy, didn't really welcome him because he wanted that position. But at the end of the day, there was a security breach which leaked out a lot of important information about the school. When the police questioned everyone, including Roy and Dave, they each gave their stories. Dave said, I was checking exam papers and was at the staff room the whole time. Roy said, I was preparing homework for my classes when everything happened. Who should the police arrest? Who was lying? Dave. There wouldn't be any exams on the first day of school. Gareth is in a pickle. He's at the police station looking at the lined-up suspects, one of whom stole Beth's bag while she was having a picnic in the park. He observes them. Beth describes the culprit as someone big, no hair, and wearing a black jacket. All the men lined up matched the description. Gareth looks at each of them, and they all have one distinct trait that makes them stand out from each other. Suspect number one has a beard. Number two is wearing shorts. And number three is wearing glasses. 
Gareth knows immediately who to arrest. Who is it? Suspect number one has dirt all over his boots. The rest are all clean. He ran through the mud tracks while Beth was having a picnic. Henry and Mia lived together in New York. They wanted to run away from big city life and celebrate their anniversary in the wild. So the guys used a special online service and found three available options nearby. Bob offered his cozy treehouse in the woods for a reasonable price. Julia offered this fancy geodesic dome with all conveniences. It's a two-hour drive away from New York, and Crystal offered an old mansion that she'd inherited from her granny. Can you help the guys make the right choice? Take a closer look at the picture of the dome. It's located near the Leaning Tower of Pisa, which means this property is in Italy and it can't be two hours away from New York. And Crystal's granny's ghost is still in the house, so Mia and Henry should choose the treehouse. The guys contacted Bob, booked the house, and hit the road. Mia is a famous blogger, so she decided to post all milestones of their journey in her stories. Can you spot any differences between these two pictures? Here they are. What about these two pictures? There are three differences. What can you say about these two? Can you see three differences?